This video is for educational purposes only. Only test your own hardware. Doing otherwise is illegal. Don't be a skin. What's going on, you guys? It is The Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. Now, I've been doing Flipper Zero content for what seems like forever, but if there's one thing you might know about me, it's that I really love GPIO boards. Now, for those of you that might be living under a rock, GPIO actually stands for General Purpose Input Output. And in the case of Flipper Zero, a GPIO board actually just goes ahead, plugs right into the top backwards every time, plugs right into the top like that, and you've used added functionality to your Flipper Zero. In this case, this is the, uh, what is this? I thought it had a wacky name, but this is just the pro dev board by Just Call Me Coco. Recently, Just Call Me Coco actually reached out again and said he had something absolutely crazy to take a look at. Now, Just Call Me Coco is an absolute mad lad, so if he says he's got something crazy, he's probably got something crazy. And boy, he did not disappoint. So, introducing the BFFB. What does the BFFB do? Well, pretty much everything. This thing's so absolutely nuts that I've devoted an entire video just to show off how awesome this thing is. Plus, I'll also show you how to do some really cool stuff with the Flipper Zero and the BFFB. All right, I'm excited. This is gonna be a fun one. Let's get at it. All right, so I'm assuming that you're wondering at this point, what does BFFB stand for? Well, it stands for Big F Flipper Board because it is a big F Flipper Board. And I should know because I actually have some big F Flipper Boards like this one I made way back in the day with two ESP32s on the back. Now the BFFB doesn't have dual ESP32s like mine does, but it actually doesn't need them at all. So let's go ahead and switch to the top down camera and take a closer look. So this is the BFFB in all of its glory. It is so freaking cool. It is absolutely enormous. I mean, like look at it in comparison to my Flipper Zero. It is huge, but it does add pretty much all the functionality you could possibly need for the Flipper Zero. So first of all, right here, we've got an ESP32 that's hooked up to this big antenna. You can even hook it up to a bigger antenna. This guy controls all of our Wi-Fi hacking and other stuff like that. Very, very cool. And this is actually an ESP32 room, which means it also has Bluetooth. So again, this board, the whole point of it is to have as much functionality as you possibly can jammed into one Flipper Zero board. Very cool. This guy right here is GPS. It's hooked up to a battery, which is right there, which maintains your satellite positions and stuff. And then you've got this huge antenna. This antenna is absolutely awesome. I have a lot of trouble catching GPS antennas where I live. This thing picks up a ton of antennas. It's very, very easy. If we move over here, we've got CC1101s. Those control the sub gigahertz frequencies. We have one for the 400 megahertz antenna and then one for the 900 megahertz antenna. You can see he's even got them really nicely labeled. The silk screening and stuff is absolutely fantastic. We have a button that says this button doesn't do anything. Well, that's actually not quite true, but we'll take a look at that in a second. If we move on over here, this guy right here, this is an NRF24. So that is a Nord Semiconductor 2.4 gigahertz chipset right there. And what that does is actually it's used for mouse jacking. Now I'm gonna to try to show at least some of the mouse jacking stuff you can do, but honestly, mouse jacking has been nothing but a headache for me. I've done it a bunch of times, but it's always kind of a headache, but we'll see if we can get it to work. Now you've also got USB-C down here because C is the best form of USB. It's the only flavor that's good anymore. What's nice is he did also, he's got the boot and the reset buttons, so you can reflash the ESP32 at your leisure, makes it really, really easy. If we move on over here, you'll notice that, as I bump into the camera again, that has two little rocker switches. So if we use this bottom switch, this will switch between the NRF24, lit up right there, and the CC1101. So if we switch it to the CC1101, the other cool thing is now we can use this top rocker switch to switch between 400 and 900 megahertz. Now, fun little Easter egg is if you have it set to 900 megahertz and go ahead and press this button right here, you'll get the Gorgonzola light. Now, rumor has it that if you smell the Gorgonzola light when it's lit up, it actually smells like cheese. So let's see if that works. All right, so let's press the button and... No, no, it doesn't smell like anything. Thanks, Awok. Fuck the liar. I know he's watching this laughing his ass off, being like, oh my god, I can't believe he actually did it. Anyway, moving on. Okay, anyway, uh, moving on. The silk screening alone, I mean, the time that he took to do the silk screening, we've got Just Call Me Coco and BFFB right there. We've got the Marauder logo. We've got like a fork cactus, which is fun. Radio stuff, because this is the radio stuff. 
a uh, little, I don't know, a little, I, that guy, that guy exists on this board. <gasps> Another guy right there with the ESP32 Marauder on there. So actually we can flip it over and we'll notice there's even more on here. So for those of us old, you might know what this is. Now, I'm really bad at Morse code, but they figured why not add Morse code to this thing too? So you've got one more function on there, which it, you know, it's just, it's silly, but it's so cool. It's just absolute mad lad. It also does have onboard SD card. I happen to have one of AWOKs, 16 gig cards right here. Always so nice to look at. Pop it back in here. Now, one of the really cool things that Just Call Me Coco was able to do with this, and one of the things that really made this entire board work, is that he was able to reuse traces for different chips. That means he's got different chips routed through the same traces at the same time without interfering with each other. That is super, super cool. So let's start playing with some of the functions of the BFFB, and I, I can show you some cool stuff to do with the Flipper Zero. But before we do that, let's do a quick segue to today's sponsor, Delete Me. Look, if you've been on the internet for anywhere near as long as I have, your data is kind of everywhere. Remember that time that you signed up for free custom stickers? Or maybe somebody was giving away free product samples? Or maybe it was just getting free desktop wallpapers. All of that data you gave all of those companies is literally sold to the highest bidder all over the internet. However, there's a catch. Those data brokers are required to remove your data if you ask them to. Now, the problem is searching through all those data brokers and asking them to remove your data takes an absolute eternity. Well, that's where Delete Me comes in. Delete Me goes through, scrubs through all of those online data brokers on your behalf and asks them to remove you from their list. It saved me countless hours. It's crazy looking at how many listings I've been removed from. And you can even see over time that I've been on Delete Me, the number of listings goes down and down and down because my data is not out there anymore. So if you're sick and tired of those greedy data miners out there selling your information, go to joindeleteme.com and use code Sasquatch for 20% off. Follow the link down below or use code Sasquatch, that's S-A-S-Q-U-A-C-H, for 20% off. Let's get back at it. All right, so now that you have kind of a lay of the land with the BFFB, let's kind of poke around at it and see what some of the features do. And because it's Just Call Me Coco and he is the founder of the ESP32 Marauder, let's take a look at the ESP32 and see what we can do with Marauder. So in order to make this as easy as possible, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my flipper to my computer so we can watch what we're doing on QFlipper as well. All right, so now that we're over on the desktop, let's go ahead and load up QFlipper and we can kind of watch what I'm doing real time. So let's pop that right here and then let's make this smaller and we'll pop it over to the overhead camera again. All right, so here we are on the main screen for Flipper and let's go ahead and go to apps. I'm gonna go to GPIO and do, do ESP Wi-Fi Marauder. Now we've gone through Wi-Fi Marauder a billion times, but from here you can go ahead and do things like scan APs, boom. And now all of a sudden we're scanning all the access points that are within range. And again, you can put a bigger antenna on this and get a lot of rain. Once you've scanned access points, you can go through and list those access points and then select them. Select uh, one, doesn't really matter because we're not actually, I'm not gonna attack anybody's Wi-Fi today. I promise we're not doing anything like that, but make sure you're only testing your own equipment. It's extremely important. Go back. So then you can run a deauth attack, you could run a probe attack, and the rickroll attack. Actually, rickroll's fun too. Let's do that, because I can show you what the rickroll attack does. So let's run that. So what the rickroll is gonna do, I'll put that down, is actually, and let me grab my phone. We load up my Wi-Fi, you're gonna see that all of these Wi-Fi hotspots are popping up to the Rick Astley song. So that's what rickroll does. It's pretty fun, and what's cool too is you can actually set a custom script to run anything you want on that Rickroll. I've got a few set up that I was running during DEF CON. Actually, let's see if those work. I totally forgot I did this. So let's go down to uh, scripts. And then I should have talking Sasquatch. If we run this, boo -doo -doo, let's see what this does. I can't even remember what it does. Let's open this. Oh, that's boring. All it says is sub two Squatch. I don't think I even made it do anything else. What happens if I load that up? What if I connect to it? Unable to join network. It's an unjoinable network. Well, that was boring. I swear I had that set up to do something cooler than that. Nope. Let's move on. Let's go back. We can go to GPS data. Actually, remember I told you I get really, really bad GPS. This antenna is a monster. So if we go ahead and go to sats, 
we are connected to zero right now. Oh, I know why, because we're not actually running it. So if I go to, go to pretty much everything, let's go to war driving. War driving, if I start war driving right now, now it's gonna start actually using the GPS. We've got a blue status light on there right now, and I'll hide my GPS coordinates. <laughs> um, and now if we go back down to GPS data, we can go to sats, and if we wait a few seconds, we'll get a few of those popping up. After these messages, we'll be right back. Hey, and just like that, I got five satellites that quickly. Super, super good. Because again, I've had a lesser GPS antenna plugged into other Marauder devices and other war driving devices. And I drove around my town trying to get satellites and found like none in like 20 minutes. So the fact that I got five already is amazing. So let's go back and let's do something fun too. Let's run Evil Portal inside of Marauder, which I don't think I've ever actually shown anybody. But one of the things you can do with Evil Portal is you can select an access point and then you can use that as the name of the Evil Portal. I already have another one set up. So if we go ahead and go to uh, load HTML file, we're going to go to Google Modern. All right. Now we've got the HTML set up and then let's start our Evil Portal. So there we go. I have subscribed to Talking Sasquatch is the name of the AP because, of course, you do. And what we'll do is when we load this up, let's connect to it on my phone. All right. There we can see it's right there on my phone. If we load it up, there we go. And then open up a browser. Boom. We have a Google sign it up. Oh, you can't see any of that. Wow. Lighting's bad. <gasps> Idiot. There we go. Now you can see we've got a Google sign in. So somebody can sign in with the credentials and then it's captured by the Flipper Zero. So if you go to hi, and my password is pass next, you can see right there up on the screen, it pops up and shows everything right there. It's super, super fun. Again, only test your own equipment. Doing anything other than that is super illegal, kind of lame. So don't do that. All right. So that is how Marauder works with the BFFB. Let's check out some other cool stuff. And let's go down to, oh, let's use sub gigahertz. So if we use proper sub gigahertz right here, we'll notice if we scroll all the way down to radio settings, we'll see it only shows the internal one because I gotta go ahead and flip the switch. Boop. And now if I back out and go back in, you can see we can switch to the external antennas. So if we do that, now we're using the external antennas. Why do you need two different external antennas? Well. The funny thing about antennas is that they're tuned. So if your antenna is not tuned to the frequency that you're using, it makes it a lot weaker. So inside of the Flipper Zero, and it's gonna be impossible to see, but right in there is a, what looks like a spring. That's actually an antenna, very teeny tiny antenna. Actually, the inside of these antennas look pretty similar to that, but the length of that coil is specifically tuned to a frequency. If you're using the wrong frequency for your antenna, it's not gonna work super good. So being able to focus your antenna to the exact frequency range that you're using means you get a ton more range and a lot better signal. So now that we've got our external set up, we can go ahead and read, and we're not gonna really see much of anything, but if I go to like read raw, and we do something like hit record, Okay, good, I have the audio turned off of that. But if we do something like take a car key, which you never want to try to clone your car keys. If you clone your car key, what's gonna happen is effectively when you go to use it, it's gonna unsync your car. So yeah, if we do something like this, oh, I'm on the wrong frequency range. See, that's what happens. Okay, so yeah, I forgot what frequency. 315 frequency, AM 650. If we go ahead and go back and then hit the record now, We've got our car key. If we press the button, we see we got a frequency on there. So that's pretty cool. Now, again, this is going to use rolling code. So what a rolling code does is basically it makes a list of all of the codes that your key is going to use. It uses an algorithm. Well, it goes one to the next to the next to the next. If you copy your unlock key and then use that, it's going to desync your car and your key and you're going to have to pay to get it resynced. And that's not always cheap and it's not always easy. So yeah, don't be a skid. All right, so that's how sub gigahertz works and how you can change the frequency of the antenna, which again is super, super cool. Let's try to do some mouse jacking and see if that works. All right, stop that and erase. Here we go. And let's go back and let's go to, I think we're over in apps. Here we go, we're gonna go to GPIO and down in NRF24. And let's go to our NRF24 sniffer. All right, so I'm not gonna start this yet because I have already plugged in. Yeah, 
This is a Logitech unifying dongle. This dongle I know for a fact works. And what I mean works is I know it's vulnerable and I know it has the correct firmware that allows mouse jacking to work. Normally, it's pretty much impossible to do mouse jacking. It's such an old attack. Everything has security for it. So unless you have something really old or you buy one that specifically works already, it's not really gonna help anything. So we'll plug it in. Yeah, there we go. And it's hooked up to this really old keyboard. So what I'm going to do is actually open up notepad right here, put it down there, and then I'll start pressing buttons on a keyboard. This absolutely disgusting old keyboard right here. And once we start sniffing, so I can use the mouse um, sniffing. Yes, um, let's change the rates and then sample time. I was able to lower this a decent amount. I think that worked last time. So let's try it. I can't guarantee this is going to work. But screw it, why not? Hit the button and, oh, is my battery dead? Oh, is it off? It's off, it's on, it's off. It's on, it's off, it's on, off, it's on. That's called blinking, boys. Here we go. And I'm just gonna keep pressing buttons on this thing. And hopefully at some point in time, it's gonna pop up. Yes, it literally is this boring. And yes, I actually did this exact same demonstration for David Bomble on his channel. Yeah, it was not particularly exciting when I was doing it either. So kind of is what it is. My battery's almost dead. Give him a spin, see if that helps. Oh no, my battery died? Come on, come on. Not a very good demo if the battery dies. Oh, we're back. Hopefully I'm okay. Hopefully. Come on, buddy, come on. And yeah, you'll see it's just going through all the channels one at a time. Uh, it's not particularly fast, it's not particularly exciting. Oh man, it looped back around. Is it not gonna work? Come on, come on. Now you want to. Now I know this is about the area where I had it disconnect last time, so I'm hoping that maybe that's where the channel's gonna be and we'll find it, but I'm getting less and less optimistic. I didn't have it switched to NRF, son of a <laughs> Well, let's try it again. Let me just exit out of the app and go back in and do this one more time. All right, so might as well delete this part. Now that I'm a complete and total dumbass, I'm going to start over. Now I'm going to actually have the NRF turned on. Pressing buttons and start. Let's go. Oh, and that's why the address is at zero. Fun. I can't believe I didn't have the NRF turned on. What a what a noob. Why are we stuck on channel 14 now? What's going on? Hello? I think it crashed. Okay, let's try this one more time. GPIO. Let's go down to NRF 24. Let's go to scan sniffer. Let's turn this down to 15. Let's go scanning. Yes. All right. Uh, may have to call it quits on this one, but I really want it to work. I remember the first time I got this to work, it took ages. Mouse jacking is not fun and it's not easy. This is why you don't see a ton of people doing it. Yeah, it's just like timing out. What the heck? All right, so plan B, what I'm gonna do is, I think I have this dongle already saved. So let's back out of this if I can, because the sniffer's just getting stuck. I don't know what's going on. So let's restart, let's kill this, open that up, and let's just go to apps, GPIO, NRF24, go to the mouse jacker, because you can see I already have an address in there and I'm pretty sure that's the correct address. So let's press okay and see if we can get in the ducky script. Loading, please wait. Now I have noticed that it does some weird stuff. Again, NRF is always tricky for me. I always have issues with it. So I do know that this gets kind of stuck, so I might have to unplug the board and let's see if I can get it to pay attention. Okay, now it's back. We'll plug it back in. Hopefully this works. And then let's just go to, I know there is Uber Gritos Matrix Wake Up. Let's see if this works. So fingers crossed, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Please work, please work, please work. I think it's stuck. Man, I swear, every time I try to do a video on NRF mouse jacking, it always goes wrong. It is such an annoying thing, and it happens like almost every time I try to do it. Now, if you do want to see a video of me actually succeeding at mouse jacking, check out the link down below and you can watch the video where it actually works. But yeah, that's the BFFB by Just Call Me Coco. This thing is an absolutely awesome board. And honestly, I know it might be a little bit on the pricier side, but 
it has everything. Now, is it the best everyday carry? Of course not, this thing's insane, but if you just wanna test stuff, you can do pretty much anything you wanna do on it. It's got so many chips that do so many things that really, if you wanna get your feet wet, this has got it all. Thank you so much for watching, you guys are absolute legends. If you wanna support me, you can help by supporting my partners. You can click the link down below and get 20% off at Delete Me using code Sasquatch. All right, guys, you are the best. Thank you for watching this video over every other video. You guys are awesome. We'll catch you next time.